Good morning, friends. Welcome back out to the garden. Today we are planting my absolute favorite vegetable. And I know I say that about a lot of things. It's probably, honestly, a true competition between carrots and sweet potatoes. The sweet potatoes, I've never had more joy in my life than when I harvest that perfect big sweet potato. And we're growing in Ruth Stout. We've grown in Ruth Stout um, two years ago, last year, kind of a modified Ruth Stout, really a deep, deep uh, lasagna style gardening. Um, and they did wonderful. But I want to go back to Ruth Stout. It's just so simple. Uh, we are making one modification. And one of these years, I'm going to hone in and nail down exactly my perfect garden recipe for every crop that I grow. But until then, I like trying to experiment with things. So this year, for the first time ever, I grew my first sweet potato starts. And um, I grew them from sweet potatoes I grew last year. We started the process maybe early February. It's a really long process, like 12 to 16 weeks to grow your own slips. Um, so started with four potatoes, four, four or five. And I have lost count how many slips we have started. I probably started seeing root growth off those sweet potatoes maybe around week four, maybe by week eight I started seeing the little buds of eyes and then by you know 10 12 weeks we're harvesting slips and then we start rooting them in water I've got three jars here uh, with lots of slips all different sizes um, and we're gonna plant them directly in our Ruth Stout garden bed not digging in the soil in any way just transplanting these sweet potato slips in the Ruth Stout um, so let me share with you what I'm doing to give them that nice little kickstart and the nourishment that they need to get going well. And um, then hopefully you guys, if you're new here, you'll subscribe and follow along till the end of the season when we harvest them. And then the proof will be in the pudding, as they say. So come down here and let's get started uh, transplanting these babies. Okay, well first let me tell you about my bed a little bit. So this is rye grass, um, or rye straw, I should say. Uh, got it from a local farmer, somewhat local, and uh, he assured it's natural and non-sprayed with any herbicides or anything like that. That's how he marketed it. So um, I feel pretty confident. Um, of course, that always lends a level of trust. Um, but if you can't source that, I'll tell you other things that I've used. My neighbor um, has a back pasture field that he would have mowed down um, by like a brush hog type mower um, because he didn't want to maintain it and he would stack that field grass in big big piles and I've gone and harvested that and used that for root stout beds in the past um, and I've also used straw old straw or old hay I should say I've used hay that is old, that has been aged, sitting out, you know, had the sun, the rain, everything beat on it for a good season, hopefully killing off some of the weed grass or weed seed in it. So hay will uh, yield more weeds than uh, if you're, especially if you're using it fresh, um, if you're willing to manage that or just, you know, lift it and pull it and stack it back on itself. It's definitely a, a reasonable source. But a lot of people often ask me in my Ruth Stout videos, can I use grass clippings the same? Can I use leaves the same? Um, basically, Ruth used what she had available to her on hand. And she would live next to a hay farmer or she often had her hay fields plowed. I can't remember the story exactly, but she used hay. So I use straw because that's what I was able to access this year. My neighbor started mowing his own uh, grass and managing it, so I no longer have access to those nice big piles. Um, but definitely use what you have on hand. The intent is you're growing in deep um, mulch, uh, 
wood chips probably wouldn't obviously work as well because uh, there's not enough broken down just yet. If you've got aged wood chips that have been well broken down, very similar. It's just a different method. Um, and I love it because, especially for potato planting, because the potatoes, you don't have to bury them in the soil. They come out nice and clean and it's just super easy come harvest time. So let's get to planning. What I've got with me today is a five gallon bucket of compost slurry. If you missed the video, I did a video a week or two ago mixing that up for my to our potatoes when I tra no my tomatoes when I transplanted those um, and it's just uh, you make use your own compost you make a quick concoction it gives the good beneficial um, microorganisms and everything a nice healthy kickstart it's really good and feeds the uh, roots of the plant and it's just a, a great way to kick off your uh, plants in the right uh, right direction. So I'm going to just, all I'm doing is I'm digging a hole till I get to soil level. That's it. I'm going to take my pint of, um, when you make a compost slurry, the water tends to rise to the top. So give it a quick stir and then we'll get a pint of that, pour it in and transplant our sweet potato. So the trick will be how tangled did these get? So here they are, nice and rooted. Not too bad. Some are definitely further along than others. It just depends on when I harvested them. And the last sweet potato slip I harvested was probably um, like four or five days ago. And then I'm just gonna stick those roots down in that compost slurry and leave the little hole where the vines can reach for the sky. And that's it. So let me bring you guys down here so you can see it up close and personal. So hopefully you guys can see the little, can you guys see that down there in my little green? So I'm going just about probably 10 to 12 inches apart. Getting down to soil level. There's the earth. So see the earth down there. So you guys can see that. Sorry, this is really tricky to do. Okay. Being careful not to step on my corn behind me. Pour in some of that compost slurry. And we'll grab another slip. It's good. Let me see if I can bring you guys over here. See, can you see? Nope, I'm in the hole. And I'm just gonna stick those roots in that compost slurry. Sorry, my hand's nasty. All right, that's it. And then I'll just leave the hole where the vines can reach for the sky. Okay, I'll try this angle, see if it's any better for you. And I'm only planting in the first two feet of roost out bed. I got potatoes growing back there. You actually might see one popping up back there as we go along. But let me get some of my... Slurry mix. grow happy and that's it as those vines grow up I will come back and squeeze the straw in um, but for right now they're fine to be left open and the straw honestly as it rains and stuff might naturally close in on itself anyway 
Um, but yeah, this compost slurry is my first year doing it. Let me show you what I would have done um, in the past. So just take your uh, slip and I would just dig down to the earth. I'm just gonna pretend here. And then I would squeeze the straw back on it. And that's really all that's necessary. But I think giving the roots something immediate to feed on and uh, you know drink up is uh, gonna be um, just the, a nice little kickstart for them. One of the things that I'm doing is um, if the, in some places the straw is just way too tall, I'm just packing it down a little bit around it. One thing I forgot to mention too is this um, straw has been sitting here since probably late February, early March I put it in. So it could just age in place. So come back till the end. I'll let you know how many I got down this. So it's probably a 22 foot row or so, how many I fit in here. And we're going to pack in some more in our straw bale gardens because I would love to see if, how, if they perform any different directly in my straw bales um, because I think that would be awesome too to line the perimeter of my garden fence with straw bales and do some if my straw bale gardening experiment if you haven't been following along with that we're doing that for the first time this year just because I do love root stout so much and if that works out well we're gonna do a lot in straw bale gardening next year so keeping our fingers crossed that's a huge success I just came across a bunny nest. It was abandoned, thankfully, but um, we put up this new garden fence because my garden was becoming a bunny maternity ward. <laughs> I'm thankful that uh, there are no surprises to be found. And I realized I probably started off with the least impressive slips of them all. So this, this is the second round of slips that I've done. Um, and I'm not yet to my third jar, which is the first round of slips that I started. And uh, I found that as I worked my way to this end of the garden, I have about 10 feet left. I was really having to remove a lot of straw and throw it back on my baking potato row, um, which they'll gladly enjoy additional straw um, it was just way too deep down here um, for me to be able to compact it and give these vines a fighting chance to see the sunshine. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised how many slips I ended up with. I can't wait to share it with you guys. I have about 10 more feet to go in this uh, bed and then we'll head over to the straw bell gardens. I just want to show you what the soil looks like underneath here. Look at that. Just absolutely glorious. That's just from years and years of breaking down straw, grass clippings, leaves. Beautiful.
Okay, well this entire row has been planted. So let me take you down and take a look at it. How did that compost slurry work for holding the sweet potato slips? And uh, I'll show you at the end why I decided to start removing some of the additional straw. Uh, but let's take a look and let's count them. You see how nice that slurry really sets up and holds the roots. Sets up really nice. They're getting really deep down in here. Well, these were baby ones too. So I'll probably come back and make sure that those roots are fully covered. Just barely peeking out of the straw. Okay, here's a bad example. So I should have really come in here and removed some straw. This is just too much for this little guy. Way down in there. Right down in there. So I probably will come back through and remove some straw from this section because you can kind of see where I started removing the straw. Okay, I think I decided what I want to do. So where I have my straw bell garden is four bells, two stacked side by side and two lengthwise. And that hole right down there in the center, I think is going to make for some happy sweet potato growing. So what I'm going to do, this is the traditional charged and conditioned straw bale using melorganite. But I am going to fill that hole a little bit with compost, put some compost slurry on top to hold the um, sweet potato vine. And then similarly, here is the first straw bale garden I did. And that hole is quite filled nicely with barn clean out. So we'll probably just top it with some compost slurry and we'll see how sweet potatoes grow. Oh, so dark, sorry. We will see how sweet potatoes grow in the straw bell gardens. So let's get going. I'll just add the last bit of that compost slurry. Don't fall too deep in there. Okay. Alrighty. What a fun experiment this is going to be. Uh, hope you're growing sweet potatoes if you're not. It is like the most shelf stable crop you can possibly grow. Um, mine lasts easily two years down in my pantry. It's so good for you, so much nutrition. Um, so they take a long time though. They're 90 days to 110 days to grow. And the tricky part is, is they're a tropical plant. Did you know that? So you can't even plant them till it's about 70 degrees outside. <laughs> so we are getting these in the ground here the very end of May and we will harvest them probably uh, late September. So see you guys back then, but come along for the growing journey. I'll be sure to do plenty of updates through the growing season so we can see how these are going. Talk to you guys later.